Hello everyone, welcome back. And uh, I'm glad to uh, be with you guys again, be able to share with you what God's been stirring in my heart about fasting and prayer as we've been continuing on this fast. This is the last week of January and I am excited to be able to just um, get into the word with you guys and really close out this season of fasting and prayer for those who have been on a fast um, throughout this time period or if you're just starting a fast. Um, do not feel like you have to be restricted to January to be the time when you fast. In fact, I would encourage that you fast throughout the year, whether it be a one day, three day, 10 day, whatever it is that, you know, you, um, you want to do just, uh, I would encourage you to fast more often than what you have been. And I pray that as you have watched these videos and gotten to this point, if you've uh, heard the other ones, if you haven't go back and you can check them out. They're on the Facebook page or YouTube. Um, but I would just encourage you to to listen to this teaching on fasting that the Lord's been revealing to me um, to share with you guys, just so we can grow in our understanding of what biblically fasting is, what it does, the benefits that we have from it, um, and just to encourage and increase your faith in that area so that way we can walk um, closer with the Lord, hear from His Spirit, and uh, just do what it is that He's called us to do. Amen. So as I was sharing last week, I do want to jump into a couple of announcements before I get into the Word. Um, you know, we are believing that the Lord is going to open up the doors for us in 2020 for a lot of big things. A couple of things that we're believing for is, um, we believe in that God has called us to go to an island called Rhoda. Um, and we believe that, you know, God's going to open those doors for us to go. We're declaring and speaking in faith that the finances are coming in. Um, we're looking to raise 10 grand. Um, and we know that supernaturally God's going to take care of it because this is something he's called us to do. Um, if you want to be a part of that, though, you can sow into the ministry by using any of the links below in the comments. And then you'll be able to sow into what it is um, that we're doing here and what God is doing through this ministry. Um, we're also planning on going to Kenya. And there's a couple other things, too, that we're working on. But Kenya is another place we're going to go and try to do some crusades and really just see a harvest of souls this year. Um, we believe that God is behind this and he's been orchestrating different things for us. So we're really excited if you want to be a part of that. Again, you can partner with us financially. Um, we definitely, you know, would appreciate your prayers. Um, we know God's going to do something supernatural, and we're excited for it. Uh, but before we get started and dive into the Word, let's go ahead and open more of the Word of Prayer. So, Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to be able to just um, read your Word. I pray that our faith would be increased, Father. Your Word says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So as your Word goes forth, Father, I pray that everyone who hears their faith would be increased, in the area of fasting, their faith would be increased to trust you more, to hear from you more, to dedicate their lives to you, to go after what it is you've called them to do. And Father, I just thank you that every weapon formed against every person listening, every every weapon formed against their ministry, against their household, against their business, will not be able to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just thank you for it and give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yeah, so let's get into it. Um, I said in the last video that, you know, my wife had heard from the Lord um, a word for this year. And the word that we're really um, believing that the Lord has um, stirred up in us is momentum. And um, so I was actually doing a little bit of research and I, I looked up the definition of momentum. And one of the definitions actually is a driving force gained by the development of a process or a course of events. Um, so with that definition, it is a driving force that's gained by the development of a course of events. What I believe that means for us in 2020, and uh, not just our ministry and us, but anyone who wants to receive this by faith, is that the driving force that's going to propel you into everything that you're doing is right here. The more time that we dedicate to this word, the course of events is every, every moment that you spend in the secret place is building momentum into what God's going to do in the natural. Every moment that we spend in the secret place is building momentum to what God's going to do in the natural. The more time that we spend alone with him in his word, the more time that we spend dedicated to his word and on our face and praying in faith and declaring in faith, it's going to be the driving force that's going to carry us through 2020. I believe that 100%. I believe it 100%. I believe that the Lord is going to 
quicken the things that he's calling us to do. He's going he's gonna to open up doors for us in different avenues and different ways that we wouldn't even believe, not believe that we wouldn't even be able to comprehend how it happened, that it has to be the hand of God, that even your enemies, the Bible even says that you'll be so blessed that even your enemies will acknowledge God. Even your enemies will acknowledge God. I believe that this year there's people around you that have been that have been knocking on what you're called to do, that have been talking bad, that have been running their mouths. And I believe that if you just take a step of faith and trust the Lord and get, get alone in the secret place and spend time dedicated to his word, you're going to see the hand of God at work and that your people around you that have been naysayers, that have been saying this and that, they're going to see the hand of God and they're going to acknowledge and testify of God's goodness. Even your enemies will give testimony to God. It's, it's in the word. It's biblical. It's what it says. And uh, so I really just want to share with you guys, um, as I've been praying and, I, and I'm asking the Lord, how do we close this out? I just want to give you guys some points. Um, I have a few points on biblical fasting, the purpose of it, and the benefits that we get from fasting. Um, so three main points that I have as far as the reasons and the purpose that we fast. One of those is to seek God for wisdom. Um, you know, every decision that we make, especially major decisions, I really believe that any major decision when it comes to who the, who you're going to spend the rest of your life with, getting married, um, you know, raising a family, where you're going to live, housing, um, ministry opportunity, different things, big life decisions that are going to change the course of, uh, of your future are things that we need to be praying and fasting about. We need to fast and seek the Lord and, and wait for an answer. And uh, I can tell you from my own personal walk that there's been times when we've had to make some pretty major decisions in our life. And one of those, for me, when I was you know, going to propose to my now wife, um, I prayed about it. I prayed and I fasted and I asked the Lord, like, if our relationship is going to the next level, then I, I want to make sure that she is the one that I'm supposed to spend all my life with. And, uh, and the Lord spoke to me. The Lord gave me a piece about it and told me that, th that she was the one. And uh, so we have to be so mindful um, to make sure that we're not just making, you know, decisions, you know, just based on feelings or emotions or what we think is right, but really consecrating ourselves to the Lord and asking him, what is your plan? What do you want to do? Because the Bible says that his plans are higher than our plans. His ways are higher than our ways. And so that's and we need to make sure that we're walking in line with what his will and his plan is for our lives and not just what we what we want to do and what we think is right. Um, <clears throat> and so we can see that in the book of Acts with Paul and Barnabas. They uh, they collected they put together this group of men who were going to be in charge, the elders, and uh, they prayed over it. But then Paul and Barnabas, it says that they actually fasted. They fasted and prayed and sought the Lord before they put them into positions. So this is a this is a big decision that they're making because they're they're electing people that are going to be representing Christ in front of the church in front of the body, and so they had to make sure that the people they did, that they put in place were chosen by God, and so they fasted and prayed and sought the Lord and waited for an answer. Once that answer came, then they made the decision to move forward. Um, and so we see that in Scripture. And so I would just encourage you: any major decisions you may have coming up right now, fast. Consecrate yourself to the Lord. Uh, put some time aside. You know, get rid of the things that are distracting you, things that are you that you find favorable. Put those things aside and just seek the Lord and see what He would speak to you and get that divine direction from Him. Um, the second thing is um, we do fasting and prayer to seek victory and overcome. To seek the victory. See, now we already have the victory in Jesus, right? Jesus paid the price. Every victory has been given to us. We know that. We speak it by faith. But there are times when we're in the middle of a situation, we're going through a, a, a battle, whatever it may be, and we just have to remind ourselves that in the midst of these situations, we need to get on our face. We need to fast, put ourselves in front of the Lord and say, I want to see a breakthrough in this area. And I'm believing that on, on this time of fasting and this season of fasting that we're in, and any time that you dedicate yourself to the Lord throughout this year, if you set time aside to fast, whatever battle that you're facing, 
that you're looking for a breakthrough in that area, if you consecrate yourself to the word of God, if you consecrate yourself to the Lord and spend time in the secret place, he's going to reveal the answers to you and you're going to see breakthrough come. That breakthrough is coming. I, I declare that in the name of Jesus right now. Anyone watching this video that's going through something, that's dealing with a struggle, I declare victory in the name of Jesus. I declare breakthrough coming to your house in the name of Jesus. Every lie of the enemy be broken off your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Grab hold of that by faith. And the scripture that I have for that is that in Judges, we see, in Judges chapter 20, we see the Israelites were in the middle of a battle. And they were losing the battle. And so it says that for one day they sought the Lord. And for one day they fasted from the morning to the evening. They fasted from the morning to the evening. One day of fasting. And it said the next day the Lord gave them the victory. They fasted for one day and sought the Lord. And through that fasting, God gave them victory. So we seek the Lord because we know where our help comes from. We fast to put our flesh aside, to, to, to consecrate ourselves to him. But to say, God, I want to see breakthrough in this area. I know that you can do it. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are mighty. You're going to come through. And that, and that is one of the ways we can fast and say, God, I want to see breakthrough in this area. And I believe that as you consecrate yourself to the Lord, as you fast and get yourself into his word and spend time in the secret place, you're going to see breakthrough coming to everything that's coming against your ministry, coming against your family, coming against your business in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe it 100 percent. And the third thing of the reason why we fast, and these are just three, there's many other reasons, but these are just three that I wanted to share with you guys. It's an act of worship. It's an act of, of showing God how much we honor him, how much we adore him. It's an act of devotion. And uh, we see that in Luke chapter 2 with Anna, the prophetess. She was in the temple, said that she set herself aside in the temple and fasted and prayed. Her fasting was a, a sign of devotion to the Lord, her dedication to him. And that's and that's one of the other reasons why we fast. It's an act of worship. It's a, it's a form of me pouring my heart out to God and just worshiping him for who he is, just worshiping him for the things that he's done, for declaring his goodness, for declaring his faithfulness, declaring and, and worshiping him and adoring him because of who he is. I can shut off everything in my life and see his hand moving in my life. See, I, I, I learned in my seasons of fasting, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me and uh, has really showed me is that we don't fast to get God to move his hand not only just to move his hand, but also to see his hand moving. So God, when we fast, we, we, we fast and seek the Lord and we declare victory and we see victory come. But there's also more to that. It's also seeing what he's already been doing. When you fast, sometimes we get distracted with the things of life. We get so caught up with what's going on around us that we're distracted by what God has been doing here and now. And we don't stop to just thank God. The Bible says, says to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say Rejoice. In fact, you know what? I want to read that scripture. We're going to go ahead and go to that. Just let me get to it here. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. He had, Paul had to say it twice just to emphasize the importance of rejoicing in the Lord. When you fast, you start to see what God has been doing in your life and how his hand has been moving in different things. And then you can focus on those and say, God, I rejoice in the fact that you came through here. I thank you for giving me the victory. I thank you for coming through. And if you did it, then you're going to do it again. If you did it, then you'll do it now. That's what the, you can declare and say, God, your hand of faithfulness was here and here. And I saw that and I thank you for it. I rejoice. I give you honor and glory. And I'm thankful that you're going to do it again. You're going to come through again because you are faithful and you never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same God that came through for me a year ago, for last week, for yesterday. You're the God that's going to come through today and forevermore. You will come through as I am faithful to your word and I am obedient to what it is that you called me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So those are some of the points uh, that, as to why we worship. But I want to show you some of the benefits that come from worshiping. I mean, from fasting. Some of the benefits that we get from fasting. 
Um, so fasting, it's it, one thing is, it's something that was expected in the Old and New Testaments, right? It's something that you see in the Old Testament, you see it in the New Testament. It's not something that is uh, an Old Testament principle. It's something that even Jesus fasted. You know, I talked about it in the first week that Jesus fasted for 40 days. Um, you know, Paul even fasted. He, I mean, took time alone. He fasted many times throughout Scripture. We see that. But fasting is a way to humble ourselves before the Lord. And it allows, one of the benefits is it allows the Holy Spirit to reveal what our condition is, our current condition, and allow him to transform our hearts. So when we fast, it allows the Holy Spirit to do a work in here because we now we, we're, he's starting to reveal to us our true heart. And we're more aware of what's going on here. And then he's able to do the work and clean out all the mess and whatever things that we need to surrender, we surrender. And in that fasting, it cleanses not only your body, but it cleanses your spirit, man. It allows you to be renewed so you can be vitalized by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit working in us to transform every part of our hearts. Um, fasting unlocks the power in you and it brings you to an awareness. I talked about that um, a couple weeks ago about how it gives us, it unleashes a power that's in us. See, Jesus paid the price and he gave us the Holy Spirit and he said the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You will receive power from on high. There is a fire power, dunamis fire power on the inside of us and that's the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit in us, when we fast, it makes us more aware of the power that's in us. So we can walk in authority. We can walk in power. I shared some testimonies on how in my seasons of fasting, how God has operated in so many different ways. And we've seen, uh, I've seen the power of God through me. And I was blown away to see what God was able to do. And it was just, and it's, and, and that's, that's for everyone. That's not just for me. It's not for, you know, it's for anyone who is willing to humble themselves before the Lord, set some time, some time aside and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, to bring awareness to the fact that he wants to do a work in you. You have resurrection power. Again, like I said before, Romans, Romans says in chapter eight, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the grave now lives in you. You have the same spirit, resurrection power in you. And when you fast, it makes you more aware of that power so you can run with power. So you can you can see, lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. So you can see miracles and signs and wonders going after. Because when you fast, you're setting your time and focus on him saying, I believe everything that your word says. And the Bible says the signs and wonders follow those who believe. So when I believe what the word says and I spend more time eating this word and this becomes my source, this becomes my food, I become so in love with the word of God and so aware that the word is so truth and so full of power that I believe everything that it says. And if I believe it, then signs and wonders are going to have to follow. That's what the Bible says. Signs and wonders follow those who believe every word, not just every written word, but every spoken word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Fasting also transforms your prayer life. That's another point. That's another benefit. Um, when we fast, it transforms the way that we pray. It transforms... Because now we have more of a desperation. We have more of a hunger because our natural body is not being satisfied. So now we have more of a hunger to go after the things of God. So the way that we pray has now been transformed into a different way. We're now seeking God with a different heart. We're seeking him with more of a fervency, with more of a, a desire, more of, God, I need you to satisfy what I have. I need you. And our prayer life is now transformed. But when we come out of that fast, we actually are praying more fervently than we were before. At least that's what I, I believe for you, that you don't have to go from this fast into a prayer that's the same that it used to be. Let it be different. Let it be transformed. Let the Holy Spirit quicken you to pray differently, to seek the Lord differently. Um, and the last thing is that fasting brings revival in your own life, which then overflows to revival in others. When you fast and seek the Lord, you, you now start to bear more fruit of revival because it stirs up this revival on the inside of you. you've been revived you've been renewed you've been refreshed and that starts to overflow around you and i actually i'm going to share with you the scripture in john chapter 15 Let's start with verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes, and he prunes every branch that produces fruit, so it will produce more fruit. 
You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. So right here we see in John 15, Jesus is speaking and he's telling them that he is the true vine and that we are attached to him. And that because we are attached to him, we produce much fruit. And anything that is not producing fruit, God prunes it off so that it can produce more fruit. So for us as believers, when we fast, what we're doing is we're allowing God to prune off areas that are not producing fruit in our life so that we can produce more fruit for the kingdom. And it says that when we attach ourselves to Jesus, when we fast, we're consecrating ourselves to the word of God, which Jesus is the word. So as we continue to read this word and get into the word more, it becomes more in, alive in us and we start to produce more fruit for the kingdom of God. We start to produce more fruit and affect people around us. It's a revival that stirs up on the inside of us. When I fast, my spirit is revived, it's renewed, it's refreshed, and it overflows to everyone around me. People are affected. People see something different. There's a, there's something that's shining bright out of you. It's the light of Jesus Christ, and it is pouring out of you. When you fast, it, it, it shows. People see a difference in your life. People will see the fruit of it in your life and you will bear the fruit and people will know that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Your enemies will know that you're a follower of Christ. And I'm, I'm declaring and I'm speaking it now that everyone who watches this video, I, I, I just consecrate yourself to prayer, dedicate yourself to the word of God and watch what he does. 2020 is going to be a new year. 2020 is not going to be the same as last year. 2020 is going to be your year where you see momentum, where what the time that you spend alone in the secret place, the time that you spend devoted to God is going to be the driving force that's going to take you through this year. The more time you spend with him, you're going to see 2020 go by like this, but you're going to see the hand of God moving in power. You're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. You're going to see an increase in your finances, an increase in your health. You will never lack any good thing. The Bible is truth. And when I, I declare in the word, I declare right now by the word of God for every person listening now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you will never lack any good thing and any weapon formed against you will never be able to prosper. And that healing, it belongs to you because it was purchased by Jesus Christ. By his stripes, you are healed in the name of Jesus. So I declare in the name of Jesus that this is your year of momentum. This is your year. This is your year. Grab hold of it by faith and run with passion. Run with fire. Let God carry you and take you. I speak now that in the name of Jesus, everyone who grabs hold of this word by faith will run, not grow weary, will not grow faint, but they will mount up on wings like eagles. You will renew your strength. Wait upon the Lord. Fast and wait upon the Lord and you will renew your strength. Jesus name. We love you guys. You're awesome. Looking forward to next month. I know God has some big things in store. Love to hear testimonies. If you if you want to be a part of what we're doing here, you can sow into the ministry. We love you guys and we'll talk to you soon.